Hey everybody, welcome to part 2 of my report on the Spieldag convention in Duisburg, Germany. In this part you will find some interviews I did with several of the publishers at this convention about their latest games. So have fun watching. Okay, I'm here at the White Goblin Games booth at uh, Spieldoch in uh, Duisburg, together with Jeroen. Hi, Jeroen. Hi. Jeroen, you've got a new uh, sneak preview of an upcoming game called Kapai Force, yeah. which will be released at Essen. Yes. So what can you tell us about it? Okay, Kapai is a roll and ride game mm -hmm. uh, with only two dice. And the prototype I show you is not the final artwork, it's just prototype. And the name Kapai is just... Uh, we just came on the ta uh, we thought of this, this title just yet. Yeah. Kapai is a Maori word and it means excellent. So you have to be excellent mm -hmm. to win this game. It's pretty simple. We have two dice and each dice has symbols with squares, with triangles, with circles or in this case bananas but those will be replaced by Maori symbols. One player rolls both dice and in this example we have a triangle and a square. All players chooses either will they play, will they draw a triangle or a square on their scoring cards. You can start anywhere you want. So for example I draw a triangle over here. Then player rolls the dice and now I roll two, two bananas and I draw two bananas on my board. It's quite simple. Mm -hmm. One player rolls, everybody draws. When at some moment in the game, I will try to connect uh, those idols with the same type of symbols. The more idols I can connect during the game, the more points I gain. Also, making groups with three the same symbol scores me points at the end of the game. The more groups, the more points. Groups with three triangles score three points, three squares score four points, and three circles score five points. Okay. Also, when making sets with bananas, I can score bonus points. Uh, possibly there will be magic uh, wands in the, fi in the final game, because this is where the magic happens. When I uh, make a group of three um, uh, wands or bananas, mm -hmm. I cross out one of these uh, spaces and they give me extra points for groups at the end of the game. So very simple, roll two dice, everybody draws and score the most points. That is what Kapai will look like at the end of the game, at the end of the year. Okay, that sounds really, really interesting. Uh, and so it will be released at uh, Spiel already, so that's in October? Yes. Okay, I'll put a link in the description below to your website so people can go and check that out once there's some news to be found, of yes, course. Yes, so and, fo and follow us on social media. We'll, we will be posting some artwork, some uh, things about this game very soon. Okay, very nice. Okay, thank you very much, Jeroen, for this uh, sneak preview. You're and we'll see you next time then at Spiel. Okay. okay. Goodbye. I am currently at the IPP booth, Ideenschmiede, Paul and Paul. Yes. And I'm here with Ralph. And Ralph, you've brought your game Kick It to the uh, to the Messe. So, uh, what can you tell us about it? It looks really really fun. <laughs> yeah, it is uh, a uh, board game influenced uh, garden game. You yeah. can play it on the grass outside in the garden. Uh, on the beach, on the sand. Yeah. It's uh, influenced by Suboteo, uh, by Tip Kick, uh, all these uh, um, miniature dexterity soccer games. Yeah. But also I'm a role-playing game, I like Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. uh, I was growing up, growing up with it. Uh, so I loved uh, Blood Bowl, you know, the um, Warhammer uh, exactly, world the game yeah. where you have orcs and uh, elves playing against each other. And I wanted to connect these two worlds, mm -hmm. the board game uh, and the little dexterity sports games. Okay. So I have a board game, um, turn-based game on the grass. Yeah. You have two actions, I have two actions with mm -hmm. the figures and uh, I still have to uh, have dexterity and not dice yeah, to exactly. decide if I'm good or not. Yeah. So I'm pushing the figures uh, over the grass with my foot 
with your feet. Like this? <laughs> yeah. It's like curling. Okay. okay. It's a curling move. <laughs> curling so move. I'm not uh, uh, going squares. I'm going as far as I'm good as with uh, pushing it. them. Yeah. Okay. If the grass is not good, I have shorter ways to go because they are not allowed to fall. Oh, okay. And I can shoot the ball with my own foot. So oh. it's a little bit like a role-playing game. You have to get close to the ball. Mm -hmm. That's the fighting zone. Okay. Yeah. I have to get close to, to the ball. Like the fighting zone is one, one foot width away yeah. from, uh, in, from the, goal. the ball. Exactly. So the ball has to be within one foot width to the figure. Yeah. Then the figure controls the ball, mm -hmm. and I'm allowed to shoot the ball with my foot. Oh, okay. Okay. But this would be too easy if there's no um, no goalkeeper. So the goalkeeper, can you can you much easy? She always has to announce a goal shot. So yeah. I want to shoot at the goal. It's a turn-based game. So uh, then I go to the goal like this. All right. And. Uh, <laughs> I can block with one leg with your foot. like this. So I'm the goalie. goalkeeper now. Yeah, yeah. She has to ask if I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> ah, I blocked it. Uh, yeah, okay. good block. <laughs> so this is the, the mixture between tactic game. Yeah. You have to, uh, you have more figures on the field. You can block the goal shots. You can block the, the running paths of figures. So it's a little bit like snooker. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you have to be really good in, in passing, in shooting. It's and a, you're playing it outside. And you play it outside. It's a <laughs> so board game outside. Yeah, so whenever the sun shines, exactly. you still have a game where you can uh, stretch your mind on, on what you want to do. And the sun is uh, shining on your head. And stretch your muscles. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Ralph, thank you very much for your short uh, explanation of Kick It. So uh, have fun at the rest of the, of the convention. And we'll thank see you, you next much. time. Okay, I'm currently at the DLP Games booth together with Anya. Hi, Anya. Hi. <laughs> so tell us, uh, what did DLP Games bring uh, to the uh, convention? To the convention, so we have um, all our games with us. Mm -hmm. um, of course, all the new games from the last year from the Essence Show, because normally we are bringing new games for the Essence Show out sometimes in the middle of the year. But um, our focus is on the Essen show. Mm -hmm. So we have for this last year in Essen, we had um, Valparaiso and Manitoba. Yeah. These are from other authors because we are bringing out in DLP, uh, we're having um, the games from uh, Rainer, the owner of the company, but also from other authors. And those are games from other ones. Okay. Yeah. So, and before we had, uh, for example, Altiplano. Altiplano, this is, yeah. This exactly. is from the last, uh, the year, year before in Essen. This is from Rhino. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, perhaps our most famous game. It's Orleans. Orleans, yeah. We have uh, several expansions for this. And um, this year we have the fifth anniversary of it. Okay. So we are bringing some new, um, well expected um, new game for okay. this yep. out. And it also has several expansions. Yes, it's already, yes. <laughs> And it's won a lot of prizes. Can you hold it up a bit? Yes, so yeah, yes. at the bottom of the box, you yes. can see all the prizes that yeah. uh, Orléans has yes. won already. Yeah. It's a very popular game indeed. Yeah. And what else uh, did you bring? I see uh, Manitoba. <coughs> Manitoba, One yes. Of your... uh, yes, Manitoba. This is from uh, two um, Italian authors. Okay. Um, with a new mechanism, with the, uh, so it's uh, based in the, um, the the Italian and Canadian mountains, um, the Canadian region. Uh, where you are a chef of the of some clans of the tree Indian, Indians, and um, there's a brand new mechanism with a totem, which uh, you have to to, um, to to draw to the other side, and with this uh, mechanism you're doing your actions. So this is brand new. Okay. And um, so it's a, it's a um, Kennerspiel, but it's not but it's not so so long. So it takes for. For example, so one hour perhaps. Okay, okay. So you can play it, um, uh, yes, without it's any. Not too heavy. Not too heavy, okay. yeah. Well, um, the other one is Valparaiso, which mm -hmm. is from Louis and Stefan Miles, mm -hmm. which are also uh, very famous authors in Germany. And this is um, yes, a classical um, board game with uh, very, uh, a lot of depth inside, and yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds very interesting. Well, thank you a lot for your time and uh, lots of luck here at the convention. Thank you. It was okay. a pleasure. See you for next me. time. Thank you. Bye. Bye. 
Okay, I'm currently at the Ulysses Spiele booth together with Dominic. Hi, Dominic. Hi. So, uh, Dominic, what can you tell us about Ulysses Spiele? Hi. Yeah, uh, Ulysses Spiele is uh, one of Germany's biggest uh, role-playing games distributors and publishers. And uh, we are here to win some new fans for our board games. Yeah, we exactly. do the localization for Dungeons & Dragons, uh, the uh, publisher and distributor for the Wrath & Glory Warhammer 40k uh, role-playing game, the new one. Yeah. Um, we also do the Tales of Acrosphere uh, role-playing game by River Horse, mm -hmm. and we have our own German role-playing game, The Dark Eye, The Schwarze Auge, yeah. and the new adventure uh, exclusive here on, on the fair. Okay, so that's yeah. a new adventure that's already. That's the new okay. adventure Very right nice. there. Okay. I did see a translation of it as well, so it's being uh, published all around the world, Yeah, you I know, uh, right. The, the Dark Eye has been uh, localized in uh, America, mm -hmm. in uh, English language, and we're quite successful there, so maybe in a few months you can have fun with that as well. Oh, okay, that, yeah. that would be something to look yeah. out to. Okay. okay. And finally, I see some vampire... Yeah. Um, we did a crowdfunding for the Vampire Dark Ages role-playing game, the V20 uh, version of that, mm -hmm. and we were very successful. The fulfillment just is over, everything was shipped, and we have the new books right here at the fair. Okay, so that's uh, a yeah. new game as well. New then. book, right. All right. Well, Dominic, thank you very much for thank your you. quick overview okay. of your role-playing <laughs> games. And uh, lots of luck, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Okay, I'm currently at the Amigo Spiele booth together with uh, Sebastian. Hello. Hello. And uh, you've got some new games uh, brought with you at Spieldoch here, uh, Saboteur of the Lost Mines yes. and uh, Llama. What can you tell us about your two new games? So at first we have uh, Saboteur of the Lost Mines, which mm -hmm. is uh, the board game version of the um, anniversary Saboteur. game Saboteur, right. which has um, 15th year anniversary this year. And um, the author, Frederick Moyerson, thought, uh, why not do a board game? Mm -hmm. And uh, we have the usual saboteur principle. Um, now, um, above Earth, so um, not into the mines, yeah, but... Exactly. but um, paths on a map. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. The principle is basically the same. You get a roll card. Um, which can be a loyal dwarf, which can be um, a traitor, like a saboteur, of yeah, course, exactly. who is working for the other team, mm -hmm. or the selfish dwarf. And so you are playing um, way cards, or you're playing action cards, you okay. can drop traps, you can uh, hire a troll, and um, of course, um, above all, you want to go into the mines to get uh, for yourself or your team the, um, treasures, the treasures, like gold and, and gems. Yes. See. Yeah. Okay, that sounds really nice. It really looks very uh, attractive with all these nice little standees and new tiles. So uh, really a step up from the, from the card game. It is table. absolutely, yes. We have yeah. now, as I said, the, the board game variant uh, with uh, meeples, we have um, friendly dwarfs, of course, yeah. <laughs> and right. yeah, and it's big fun. And uh, since this morning, we are actually promoting it uh, without a break. Okay, so very nice, very popular game. Then it is absolutely okay. yes. And your other game is called Llama. Oh yeah, uh, the other game is uh, Llama, which is a, a card game um, with very simple rules. You play one after the other. Um, you need to get rid of all your hand cards, which are minus points at the end of the game. Okay, yeah. So, and you put down a two on an on a existing two, or you can put down a three, and so on. At a, right. On a six, you can put down another six or a llama, right. because a llama has ten minus points at the end. Oh, wow. So you want to get rid of the llama as well. Mm -hmm. And um, if you can't drop down a card, you can just uh, take another from the pile and um, if you are finished, yeah. um, you have the chance to uh, put down or give back um, a minus point chip okay. and the others are just getting um, the minus point chips. As I said, it's a, a basically a simple game uh, which you can play within 15 or 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. um, it's easy for a break or uh, maybe you can um, also do a, a kind of tournament, so oh, yeah. we are figuring this out at the moment, <laughs> but yes. 
it's yeah. it's very big uh, positive response. Okay, cool. Quick little game that you can just take with you. As as you know, Amigo has lots of these little you know portable card games that you can take uh, yeah. along with you in recognizable boxes with the red logo. Yeah. So yeah, okay, that uh, looks very nice. Uh, thank you very much for your time. No problem and, at all. Uh, lots of luck here at the rest of the convention. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And uh, thanks for watching. Okay, I'm at the uh, Game Factory booth here together with uh, Alex. Hi, Hi, Alex. And uh, we're at a table with the game Clask. Yeah, Clask, right now here. It's a fast playing two player game. It's uh, yeah, from Mikkel Bertelsen, a uh, Danish designer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's a little bit like. Um, kicker in Germany or, or air hockey, a mix between this because you've got this striker, here's your main character and you play is under the table magnetically Magnetic, yeah. and you've got this ball here and so now you can see, you can imagine you have to score points um, mm. yeah, with goals but uh, on the other hand they are much more and um, strategic in this game. The first player who've got uh, six points wins the, the match and um, you can uh, earn points on a different way. Scoring a goal, yeah, easily, or do mistakes. If you go in your hole here, it makes clask, and this is the word in Danish, okay. like uh, yeah, clapping like this. Exactly, it's yeah. it's a mistake, so yeah, the other player scores. And if you get two of these magnetic uh, magnets here, um, <laughs> we player. call it biscuits. And <laughs> um, if you got two of these, it's also bad. The other player gets a point. Okay. And if you are playing too heavily, you can lose control of okay. your over, uh, top side of your striker. You can't reach it because under the table there yeah, is exactly. a barricade here. Oh, right. So mm -hmm. I can't get back my striker. That's also bad. The other player also gets a point. All right. If uh, anybody scores a point, which way it doesn't matter, these magnets go back on their original position. Between the games they can flow around <laughs> off the table. Pieces it doesn't around. matter after a point is scored, they are, go back in this position and the player who don't get a point this round um, can get to kick off and yeah, then you go to kick off and okay. play again. Right. Normally you don't play only one match. It's, a, it's very quick and fast if you mm -hmm. can play it. So we normally play best of three or best of five and yeah. The main thing about this game is you can play it with every person. You can play it with a four, five, six year old boy or girl. You can play it with your grandma, with your grandpa. It's really easy. Maybe you, you don't play with all the rules then, but also the feeling pushing the ball around and this hand-eye coordination thing, it's, it's a really cool thing. Yep. And on the other hand, you can play it really, really competitive in a, yeah, in a, uh, in a tournament mode. So exactly. right now we do a tournament here on the fair, one today and one tomorrow. And the, the best three players of this tournament go to Berlin to the German Championship. Oh, wow. If you win the German Championship, you go to the World Championship in Helsinki. <laughs> and right now, um, Germany is a world champion because oh, wow. uh, last year, Jaro Koch, our German player, uh, won the World Championship in Helsinki. So, yeah, I'm really excited to see um, if we can go on with this winning streak we will yeah. see this year. And um, yeah, so. You can play it in tournament, you can play it for fun, you can play it anywhere you want. <laughs> it goes assembled out of the box, you take it out of the box, put it on the table and have fun. Yeah, okay, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, that sounds a lot of fun. So, um, a lot of success with the tournament and uh, we'll see you next time then. Yeah, thanks. Bye. Ciao. <laughs> Okay, I am currently at the Feuerland uh, booth here at uh, Spieldoch. I'm talking to Inga. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. So, Inga, can you tell us what games Feuerland brought to this convention? Yeah, our main game for this convention is Wingspan or Flügelschlag in German. Yes. From uh, Stonemaier Games originally, where we did the localization. Mm -hmm. The German, you can uh, test play it. It's sold out already. Sold out already. It's such a popular <laughs> game. It yeah. is. It is. And uh, you can also play test Fuji um, and Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, which we presented last year in, in Essen. Yeah. And uh, we have. 
to, to buy with Magnostorm and Scythe and uh, Viticulture, so the, the bigger ones. Yeah, so you have your games, yeah. Yeah, your popular yeah. games. But our main focus is uh, Wingspan. Wingspan, yeah, yeah, yes. yes. Very popular game. Yes, I can see several is. tables filled with people. And Always. it looks really nice with all the components and the, the, the dice yes. tower, etc. Absolutely. Okay. And well, Inga, thank you very much for your time. You're welcome. And uh, <laughs> lots of luck at the rest of the convention. Thank okay. you very much. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right, I'm currently at the uh, Zoch uh, booth here at uh, the convention uh, Spieldoch, and I'm talking with uh, Walter. Hello. Hello. Uh, Walter, what can you tell us about the new games that you brought? Yeah, mostly we have uh, new children games. Yes. It's uh, Purzelbaum. It's a game for uh, children uh, four years up. Yeah. And uh, then we have a, a, a three-dimensional tree in the game where you have uh, leaves and you have uh, nuts at at, um, at the tree and you try to uh, let them fall down in holes which you open okay. in, the, in the board. Uh, so you uh, first check which uh, hole should be the right one, the, 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 the best one to yeah, open exactly. okay. and then let fall, the nuts fall down. All right. And uh, this is in, in autumn time later on, the game will be a winter shape and then you will try to find the nuts which were fallen before. Okay. This is a children game, then we have another children game, which is Go Gecko Go. Go. <laughs> it's uh, six years up, and in that case, we have a little race, uh, where the, uh, you have four animals swimming in a river, okay. and um, you cross bridges, and you need to, uh, to stack uh, the, the animals, yeah. but if you are too high, oh, then, then yes. they will, the bridge will uh, exactly. knock they you will, off. Uh, <laughs> their head will bunch and uh, <laughs> the bridges. Uh, so, and then we have uh, Up durch die Mauer, yeah. which is a quite special game, because there you have a rotating board, yeah. and uh, underneath the board you have uh, magnets mm -hmm. so you can move uh, the ghosts which are on the board yeah. either by using the magnets mm -hmm. or by rotating yeah. the board itself okay. so some of the ghosts will move others will stand still and you have to collect items which are uh, spread all over the over the board <laughs> all right so and last but not least we have Rux Raus, which is a very small and easygoing card game. Okay. You are a robber and try to get a lot of uh, diamonds uh, from from the people crossing yeah. the forest. All right. Yeah. Sounds a lot of fun. So I'll, I'll just uh, have a look around then and uh, check those games out. So thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome. And uh, lots of luck at the rest of the convention. Fine. Thank you. See you next time. See you. Okay, I'm here at the Game Brewer stand together with Rudy. Hi, Rudy. Hi. <laughs> so, Rudy, uh, what can you tell us uh, that Game Brewer brought here to uh, Spieldoch in uh, Duisburg? Well, we brought all of our games, of course. Yeah. And um, especially Fujikoro, mm -hmm. we, which we have here on the dis on display. Uh, not to play yet, but just on, on, on display. Yeah. Um, and you can see all the beautiful components of our game. Yes, uh, that's just not the, the miniatures yet, but yeah, that's the prototype, and it already looks uh, very impressive. So, uh, and it's on Kickstarter right now. It's on Kickstarter right now. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'll put a link in the description so you can go and check that out. And what else did you uh, bring to uh, the convention? We have seven games now, so we brought them all seven. We have uh, Gugong and Gentes. Uh, mm -hmm. These are actually my last two copies that, uh, and then we're completely sold out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Festo. Pixie Queen, still a few copies, mm -hmm. and uh, Camera Station. Camera Station, yeah. Okay, all great hits. All right, well, I wish you the best of luck at this uh, convention, and uh, lots of fun, and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, I'm here at the Cosmos booth, together with Torsten. Hi, Torsten. Hello. So, uh, what did Cosmos bring to Spieldoch this time? Not much this <laughs> year. We have some more in Essen yeah. at the end of the year. But the news for this year is Natives. Yes. It's a card game. Mm -hmm. Maybe you know Machikoro. Machikoro, yes. It's the same, same mechanism, kind of mechanism, but without, without, without dice, just with cards. Okay. And Monster Match is a little fun reaction game. Okay. So, 
So yeah, it looks what like. What do you a, want to know? Fun, yeah, well, maybe you can show us a bit uh, how it plays. That looks like something. I yeah. start with the monster <laughs> yeah, match. Exactly. So you have to find, you have to get back your donuts. Okay. Every monster has stolen a donut, <laughs> and you have to find it. Mm -hmm. You have to get it back. At the beginning of the round, there are ten monsters. The monsters have zero eyes. Okay. Up to five eyes. Yeah. Zero arms. Up to five arms. Zero legs. Up to five legs. Yeah. So there are ten monsters. You roll the dice. Big chunky dice. Two yes. dice. <laughs> one with the uh, arms, legs, or I'm eyes. The other one with the color. And everyone has to pick as one fast as possible the monster. Yeah. So it's a kind of a memory game then. No, not a memory game. Oh, you can see them on game. the table already. Okay. <laughs> reaction game, and you have to be fast to do yeah. it. If you're the last one, no monster. If you pick the right monster, you get it. If you yep. pick the wrong monster, you have to get one back. All right. So that's all. Okay. Looks played nice. in 10 minutes. Played in 15 minutes. When the cards are over, yep. it's gone. <laughs> cool. That's a, monster match. Yeah, a fun little. Monster bug! <laughs> cool. The other news, natives. Um, you're leading a native tribe, an Indian tribe. Yeah. And you can hire new tribe members from other people. You can, if you, the more tribe members you have, the more things you can do. If I have three fishermen, I can get three um, Salmon from, from the prairie. Okay. There are seven different roads. You have to uh, find as many points as you can at the end of the game. Mm -hmm. um, some give you some more members you can hire from the prairie. Some give you to hunt something more. And it's a little bit like Machikoro, if yeah. you know that, but without dice. Okay. And you can find as long. There was one card, when this card appears, the game ends. If you'd like to see, it was played yeah, over I'll there. Take a shot later, yeah. So if you take a look at that. Okay. Needs 30 minutes. How many for players? Two to four, hmm? Three to four players? Two to four players. Oh, two to four players, okay. And with two players, the same procedure as with two, three or four players. All right. There are three expansions inside. All right. To <laughs> level it up a little bit. Okay, okay, cool. Really a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> Because it's not much interactive at the beginning, but with the expansion, it's much it more, more interactive. Okay, that's good. Okay. All right. So that are the two news for this year. Yep. And last year, in Essen, Roll for Adventure Roll for appeared. Adventure, yeah. <laughs> this is a cooperative guys dice game. You have to defeat monsters. You have to take care of your lands. Every every round, some other monsters appeared in some other lands, killed something. Uh, family game yeah. played in yeah. 30, 35 minutes, okay. 45 minutes cool. for two to four get players. Maybe for one player if you like, but okay. it's more fun with players. More fun yeah, with much more. Okay. So thank you very that's much, Thorsten, for our uh, news for today. Yeah, for the overview of the new games and uh, thanks for your time and uh, lots of luck at the rest of the convention. Oh, thank see you, you very time. much. Bye. See you next time. Okay, I'm at the booth with uh, Tobias and uh, Michael and Tobias. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes. Uh, for your new prototype game. So uh, it's called uh, Sailor's Favorite Deduction Game. What's the, what's the title? That's the title. Well, yes, uh, what's the, I'll say it's a subtitle. <laughs> okay. And uh, the title is Pirates, easy to remember. Pirates. Like it's Pirates Feed the Kraken, okay. the Kraken. And then, like, the subtitle is, um, well, of course, it is Sailor's only favorite deduction game. Yes. All right. Okay. That's, that's that sounds very interesting. Yes. So, what's the game about? What yeah, what, what it's about, okay? Um, so, the story mode, it, um, long story and very short. You've got the sailors. The sailors are good, mm -hmm. and they want to ship, they want to go to mainland. Okay. That's the goal. But we are not all good. Between us, there are pirates. Right. They, they came on board, secret pirates. And the pirates, they don't want to go to mainland. They wouldn't want whatever. They don't, they don't bother. Their story is to go straight to the Bermuda Triangle. All right. In the Bermuda Triangle, strange things happen. 
um, ships go down, um, there are mysterious monsters, so that's the place where pirates want to be. All right. <laughs> and then, yeah, that's more or less it. So it's, it's a straightforward deduction game. Mm -hmm. the, the good guys, they don't know each other. They've got one goal, and the bad guys, they've got everything under control. They're doing, under the table, they're doing their special things, and they want to go down a different direction. Oh, okay. So everybody gets a token in a bag. Yes, yes. Hidden. Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah. It looks really nice. I really love the components. Will this Ooh, actually you. be such a elaborate game in the final production? That's our vision. Yeah. So, yes. so like the thing is, um, most deduction games, um, they they come easy just with cards. cards You've exactly. got cards and the deduction. That's no the thing. Board. No, no board. No board. Yeah. And yeah, you can sit around the. Um, um, Anywhere you can start playing a deduction game. So we want to we want to make a deduction game that is a board game, and you've got like cool components. You don't you don't need these components. It's just it's like for the story mode. You want to have a cool cool board, and that's why we we put a lot of work in the prototype to make mm -hmm. the prototype look like something. Exactly. And our vision is to have the game and the end. You want to have these high quality components. You want to have a three D model of the ship. Um, for my account. For my taste, this ship is even too small. I want to have a bigger ship. It has to be like real massive, <laughs> and you want to like you, you want to have the feeling you're all sitting in this boat. Okay. And you're all one crew. And if something bad happens, it happens to the crew. So oh, that's, right. that's that's our vision of the game. Oh, yes. Right. So you're starting over here. Everybody's on the same ship, and the pirates are trying to move it that way. Yeah. Yes, and you yes, really yes. get tense, and you so say, guys, hey, let's stick together. We want crew. Okay. We want to come. Yeah. So that's 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 the uh, that's the, our, our vision of the game. Okay. Correct. Yeah. That sounds really nice. And uh, when will this be in production? When are you, are you going to kickstart it? Yes. Well, um, yes. There's this new thing called Kickstarter, <laughs> and of course, we want to be a part of it. No, so we are. Um, we want to do it ourselves. So we're not going to any big company, um, just because of the fun of it. Yeah, it's a cool thing to do. So our plan is to start the Kickstarter, you know, to the end of the year, more or less. We've got the um, the cool big convention in Essen, the yeah. Spiel, mm -hmm. and we. Our plan is during the Spiel, we want to have the um, the Kickstarter running. Yes. yes. Okay. So cool, you, yeah. you can visit us. We can explain the game to you. You can have a game. You can have play. You can play test the game. And if you like it, you just can go and go start the straight away. That's, that's our plan. If it will work, I don't know, but um, let's just try it. Why yeah. not? It sounds nice in any way, and it looks really cool on the table. I love the components. Ah, <laughs> thank you, uh, it's, thank it's you very much. It's a great theme. I, I like the theme as well a lot. Mm. So, uh, well, uh, Michael and uh, Tobias, thank you very much for your time, ah. for your overview of your game. Thanks for joining us. Yes, yes sure, thanks. no problem. And once it goes live, uh, drop me a note. I'll put the uh, link in the description below this video as well, as soon as that goes live. Cool. So uh, we'll see how that goes for you, and uh, lots of luck with that. Okay, thank you very and, much. Uh, perhaps we'll see you at Essen as well. Great, yes. awesome. Thanks. Goodbye. <laughs> thank you guys for watching. Yes, see you later. Bye. Okay, I'm currently at the Queen Games booth here at uh, Spieldoch. Together with Willy. Hi, Willy. Hi. So, uh, Willy, what did Queen Games bring to uh, this uh, convention this year? Uh, as a um, new game, we have uh, Copenhagen. Yeah. Uh, a game where you build a, a beautiful city of Copenhagen, uh, and it's a sort of card management and a sort of puzzle. Yeah. You want to uh, lay down um, tiles and make points with it because you want to have uh, that there are many windows in these tiles yeah and you can pay these tiles with cards and you have to uh, make a card management to have the uh, the the real uh, the, the the right cards uh, to uh, put uh, to, to, to buy the tiles yeah. to build your city. Because there's cars in different colors and there's yes. the tiles in different colors and you're trying to build the facade yes. of one of those colorful buildings. Yes. Okay, that looks really great and it's on Kickstarter right now as well for a deluxe edition. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> okay. I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, and what else did you uh, bring? Uh... Um, we have also um, a game for children yeah. and for the whole family. Mm -hmm. uh, it's called Shaggy Rock. Yeah. And uh, it's um, um, a game where you, are, uh, where you move animals on, an, uh, on a shaggy rock, yeah, on a rock. and okay. uh, they want to fall down, okay. but you don't want them. And if you uh, manage it, 
to put one to another place, then you get coconuts, okay. and the coconuts is that what you want. That's to your have. points. Okay. okay, sounds really fun. Okay, and I also see Skylands, which is a relatively Skylands new game. Skylands is a new game, but it's from uh, the fair in Essen. Yeah, and uh, we are all builders of uh, beautiful cities in the sky. Mm -hmm. uh, there are islands in the sky and you want to make victory points uh, to uh, when you discover um, uh, the skylands, yeah. when you um, manage to put citizens in the skylands and get points uh, with this. Okay, that sounds fun as well. Okay, well, uh, Willy, thank you very much for your overview of uh, Queen Games' newest games here at uh, Spieldoch, and we'll see you at uh, Spiel Essen then. Yes. Okay, you're bye. welcome. <laughs> bye. Okay, I am at the Corex Games booth together with Eric. Hi, Eric. Hi. So, Eric, uh, what did Corex Games bring to uh, Spieldoch? Yeah, at first, uh, it's um, uh, not so new game, we uh, took it with us in Essen at first, but now it's done and completely and we can sell it, it's Tudor, okay. it's a, a yeah, high level uh, Kennerspiel maybe, yeah. um, okay. where you are a nobleman on the um, court of Henry VIII mm -hmm. and you try to get victory points by uh, intrigue and um, worker placement um, to collect some tiles and collect cards but every game is very different because uh, there are so many different victory conditions you can uh, build up while you're playing the game and yeah it's very very cool because it's highly interactive okay. and uh, you can be very mean to your opponents you can uh, cross their plans and uh, try to be the one to get the most uh, out of your very good rings. Yeah, you see it. It's yeah. very, very cool because oh, you have okay. a, You're actually a wearing hand, rings uh, real hand. rings. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and you can be the, 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 the high master of seal, you can be the card master and so on. Yeah. Okay. There are so many different cool. possibilities for you. And every time you get some of that, you get a ring and the ring does your actions better. Ah. Yeah. It's, it's very cool and it depends how uh, where you you get your ring on yeah okay it's, okay it's very cool and we also got very cool miniatures for that oh, yeah. nice. <laughs> but they're the really really hard and high detailed cool uh, in the different uh, colors of okay. the everybody likes miniatures <laughs> of course I do yeah I really like to paint them yeah. all right um, the second one we get yeah, you know Chronicles of Crime, Crime of course. Of Crime, yes. Now we have the Chronicles of Crime Noir expansion. Okay, cool. Um, it's a new setting. Yeah. Now you aren't uh, on London in the modern times. You can go to Chicago in okay. the in the fifties oh, nice. and be a private detective who is a little bit more roughy, a little bit yeah. more. Uh, yeah, you can uh, pay people to tell you information. Oh, you can. Right. Uh, be a little bit, um, yeah, bally to yeah, them, exactly. yeah. Nice. But it all had consequences, mm -hmm. and sometimes you maybe f get people feared about you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really cool. There are four more scenarios there, and there will be more to download for that. Okay. For cool. that setting, yeah. The third one we completely lucky to bring with to the um, Spieldoch is uh, Champions of Midgard. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Very German popular. version. Yeah. We got it a few days ago and sent to our um, to our Spiele Schmiede. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it will be in retail in a few days. Okay, yeah. cool. We're really, yeah. we're really glad about that. Exactly, it's a popular game. So it is, it is one of the best and <laughs> popular uh, worker placements all over the world. So that's yeah. the German version of Champions of Midgard. Yeah, okay. and we got a completely better, better board game and uh, worked through the material, we pimped it up. Okay, great. Great. So, okay, well, uh, Eric, thank you very much for your overview of your uh, new games here at uh, Spieldoch. Yeah, thank and, you uh, too. Best of luck at the rest of the convention. Thank you very okay. much. You too. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 
All right, I'm here at the Burley Games booth together with uh, Pete and John. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. And uh, you've uh, designed a new game called Rolling Bears. Rolling Bears it is, yes. Which yeah. is going to be kickstarted, I understand. Yes, yes. Okay, so what year. can you tell us uh, about the game? Okay. Um, the game is a dice drafting game uh, where you roll the dice and you try and get various animals, including bears, hence the name Rolling Bears. We have some green dice with a, they're all logo dice, so we have green dice with fish on, we have white dice with little hedgehogs on, <laughs> we have blue dice with ravens on, grey ones with wolves on, and black ones with bears on, so that's where we get the, the exactly. bears for the name. Yeah. <clears throat> the game is complete with, with boards, which are an aid to scoring. And there are two different ways of playing. There's Wuppertal rules, which have a board that looks like this. Uh, and you put your, when you capture your dice from the center when you're playing, you put them on the board, and that assists you in easily adding up your scores, because you put them in these columns and the score, you just take the number which appears beneath the rows of dice that you've got. Okay. You, in addition to scoring for the different colors of dice, which are worth different values, you can also collect uh, animals, animal sets of any of the animals I've just mentioned, and you put the animals that you collect into your animal pen here, okay. and at the end of the round, the person who has the best animal set, which is the one with the most dice in it, can then put their animals into this column here. Uh, the animals score eight points each, and if you get a set of bears and as someone else gets a set of hedgehogs there is a, an animal hierarchy here as well so the bears will go in here as opposed to the hedgehogs so it's like a sort of a food chain really yeah exactly and the better animal goes in here so you have to balance the the scores you get from the individually colored dice against the fighting against other people to get the biggest and best animal set so that's Wuppertal rules. Wuppertal rules is for between two and five players. Okay. But also within the game, uh, <clears throat> we have something called Alandica rules, which uh, okay. they'll be on the reverse of the Wuppertal boards. A nice orange board. <laughs> yes, nice orange board here. And instead of having columns of different colors, the all the columns now are a maroon color, and so so they have scores from one through to five, and as you start collecting the different colored sets of dice, you can decide what the colors are worth. From the previous version, the black dice were worth five, down right. to the green ones worth one. But with this version, as you collect your dice, you can assign them to different columns. Yep. So there's a difference between the two. In this version as well, the best animal set, you collect different animals, so there's five different animals and you can only collect one of each, so the best animal set will be the one with the, the most animals in, but they'll, they'll all be, be different animals. Okay. And you play a, an amount of rounds which is exactly divisible by the number of players, so each person has a, a chance to throw the, throw the green ones first or whatever, and it evens out right. the, the chance with everything. Um, as you quite rightly say, we're going to run a Kickstarter for this. Yeah. And we will be starting shortly after this show when we get back to the UK. Okay. So um, look out for it on Kickstarter. I will. I'll, I'll also put a link in the description below this video so people can go and check that out. That will be great. So thank Rolling you. Bears, uh, thank you very much, guys, for uh, your overview of this game. And the best of luck at the rest of this uh, convention. Thank you, Raymond. Okay. Thanks bye. very much. Yeah, bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Okay, I'm here at the Jumbo booth together with uh, Sandra. Hello. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, so we've got a couple of new games here that you brought to the uh, convention. Yes. So yes. that's Caper and Overbooked. Yes. Sandra, what can you tell us about these new games? These are two of our new strategy games. We uh, brought to the market in February, I think. Yeah. Brand new. <laughs> um, in Caper, you have to um, steal monuments. 
for okay. example, the Eiffel Turm or uh, Versailles <laughs> and so on, and you have to place your thieves to the monuments yeah. and you have to collect points and the one who has the most points at the end yeah, wins, wins, wins the, the monument. And it's a drafting game, I understand, so you're yes. drafting cards. Yes, right. Okay, sounds nice. I really yes. like the artwork as well. Yeah. <laughs> Looks really nice. We had really good feedback from our customers today. Uh, it took some time to play it, Okay. but um, they said in general, the people like it. it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And overbooked uh, Over by uh, Daryl Chow. Yes. Overbooked <laughs> is the second new strategy game where you have to place um, persons into uh, airplanes. Airplanes. <laughs> and you have to see how they want to to sit together. Okay. You have different uh, colors, mm -hmm. and you have to try to sit them in a special way. Okay. It's difficult if you have placed some persons and yeah. you have another um, challenge. So it's overbooked mm -hmm. and you have to take persons to the, yeah, to the outside the of the plane. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and yes, that's really nice. It's more a family strategy game. Okay. And this is more. Uh, Specialist game. Okay, yeah, okay. So this is a bit more puzzly then, where yes. you have to place your yes. uh, your, your your people. <laughs> yes, okay. it's a very different design to caper. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more family. It's family colorful friendly. and yeah. yes. It certainly is. It also has a nice yes. actual uh, <laughs> traffic control tower. Yes, this is <laughs> the, really nice. for, for the starter. The starting player token. Yes, and <laughs> at the end, you have to count your points. There are special points for some reasons. Um, the red ones are um, lovers. Yeah. And you have to place them <laughs> next to in each a other, pair. of course. Yes, yeah. of course. <laughs> um, then we have kids, and yeah. you have to place uh, adults around the kids. Okay. <laughs> and um, there are also um, minus points for, for empty reasons. seats. Yes. Well, of course, you want to yes. fill that plane. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it sounds and really fun. If you have the most points, you will you receive the... The wings. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, Sandra, thank you very much for your overview of these uh, lovely new games. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, lots of luck at the rest of the uh, convention. And uh, we'll see you next time, perhaps at Spiel as well. Yes. Okay, well, see you then. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Okay, I'm at the Sun Smile Gaming booth together with Marcel. Hi, Marcel. Hi there. And you've got a prototype of a brand new game called Star Renegades, which is a player versus player game, two-player game. And uh, it's you know, two teams versus each other with lots of units on the map. So, Marcel, what can you tell us about your game? Yeah, as you already mentioned, this is a two-player war game. Um, it is super simple to play. There are not many rules. It looks complicated, mm -hmm. but it isn't. Uh, most of the time you have only two resources. You're building stuff, you're moving stuff around. Pretty basic, pretty basic units. Um, what's so special about this game? The war is resolved without or with nearly no luck. There are no dice or something. Wars are resolved with uh, cards you can play when you fulfill patterns or uh, other things. And also something special about this game is you decide where the war takes place, but the opponent has a whole turn to react. So it's never like this, I go there, everything is gone, it's super tactical, I say here we are fighting, and then the opponent can react. So it's a super tactical, pretty slow, easy game. It takes about 30 minutes, 55, 45 max. And it has a lot of replayability because the decks which you're using are um, different, so it's an asymmetrical game and you can put your companions in different combinations so yeah there are a lot of replayability in this game yeah so each color each faction has several generals basically and yeah. they all have their own set of cards and you pick two of them correct and you build your deck from that and each player also has several neutral cards that both players have correct so correct. there is uh, some cards that are similar and, and the rest is different and then you uh, just uh, fight it out on the map with all your units. So you're building more and more units, kind of like Command and Conquer-ish. <laughs> if <laughs> you like gives these... that vibe, yeah. <laughs> if you like these kind of games, Command and Conquer Dune whatsoever, 
you will probably like this game. Okay. So. <laughs> well, it's, it at least looks very interesting with all the 3D units on the map. It looks very cool. And you will be trying to get that uh, published in uh, 2020, maybe even kickstarted. True. That's that's the plan. Um, we are not stressing. So we look when time passes by what's possible. But yeah, we, our goal is beginning 2020 to have a Kickstarter. If no publisher says, oh yeah, that's cool, I yeah. want to have it. Okay. Well, thank you, Marcel, for your brief overview of your thank game you. uh, Star Renegades. Thank you. Um, do you have a website or somewhere where people can check out your game or maybe get some news? Yeah, exactly. Uh, just che check sunsmygaming.com okay. or go to Facebook or Instagram at sunsmygaming. You find a lot of pictures. You can contact me if you like. So, yeah. Okay. You'll well, find me. Marcel, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very and much. And good too. luck at the rest of the convention. Thank you. Bye. Bye. And so that was my report on Spieldoch in Duisburg, Germany. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you next time on Board Game Heaven.